Damaged Defenders by Sherza. Chapter 99. Phil. It very swiftly became clear to Phil the next morning that not only Tony and Loki, whom he had expected, but Thor were in the know as to Hydra and fully on board with keeping Steve in the dark for a little bit longer. Long enough, hopefully, to have a day to unwind after the door they'd been on. Phil figured this out because Tony herded everyone into the TV room, part of the common entertainment floor, literally three seconds after everyone was done eating, babbling about highlight reels the entire time. Thor and Loki both immediately joined in. Surprisingly, so did Steve. And all four of them were at least grinning. Loki was actually snickering. Oh wait, all five of them were looking at least amused. Because even Soldier had a very Natasha-esque amused quirk of the lips going. Huh, maybe there was more to this than keeping Steve in the dark for a day. Phil had gotten the unedited files last night, but he hadn't had time to do anything about them, given everything else that had been going on and the hour at which the group had returned. He'd planned on watching at least some of the files today. To their credit, the highlight reels were a really effective stalling tactic. Within five minutes, everyone, even Natasha and Logan, the more serious of the Avengers, were openly grinning. Soldier even had that cork on the lips going again. Pretty much everyone else was either literally on the floor laughing or very close to it. Even himself, in his defense, listening to Stark squeak like a squirrel over things in Sparta time while watching the rest of the science contingent lose their minds over the stuff the suit recorded was a devastating combination. The Alfheim reel almost literally brought the house down as literally everyone with even a passing knowledge of Harry Potter reacted to the sight of King Cellar with a near simultaneous mention of Lucius Malfoy. By the time that giggle fit was over, only himself, Natasha, Soldier, and Logan were still sitting on the furniture. And Phil had clung to his seat to keep from killing over. It wouldn't do to break anyone's brains by ending up on the floor with everyone else. Everyone else had ended up on the floor laughing hysterically, either at Salar himself, the fact that nearly everyone had reacted to the sight of him the same way, or simply in reaction to everyone laughing themselves sick. When things calmed down, Tony climbed back into his seat. We have got to watch Chamber of Secrets, so they... Tony waved a hand at the unfamiliar with 21st century Earth contingent. Understand why we all just lost our crap. Seconded! Darcy chirped, still giggling. Most of the others who knew the series were nodding agreement as well. I get the popcorn started, though we should maybe watch Philosopher's Stone first. Malfoy's not in that one. Well, not Malfoy Sr. anyway. But they're gonna need it to completely understand Chamber of Secrets. Point, Tony agreed. And thus was a nearly six-hour extension with breaks for snacks, lunch, and the inevitable giggle attacks during Chamber of Secrets arranged in such a way that Steve had no reason to be at all suspicious that something was up. By the time they wrapped up watching the two movies, it was time for dinner. After that, Tony, backed by several of the others, insisted they might as well watch the rest of the Harry Potter movies since they started the series. They wouldn't manage them all that night, of course, but they could manage at least two more, which would get them through half of the videos. Phil joined them in the TV room, but he paid only enough attention to be aware if a problem cropped up. Instead, he focused his attention on the unedited files which were unexpectedly entertaining, even with the more hilarious moments of the highlight reels in context. Phil managed to quietly snicker his way through the whole Spartafheim file by the end of the night. With one thing or another, Steve actually got the day of rest they'd been hoping to allow him before telling him about Hydra. Without once, as far as Phil could tell, tweaking Steve's sense of something being wrong, which was a not inconsiderable feat. Steve wasn't Natasha, aware of every nuance of people's behavior, but he was aware enough to have twigged to abnormal behavior if it had been present. The next morning, Phil got up a bit earlier than usual and headed for the exercise floor. If Steve followed the pattern he'd established before the tour, he'd be down there working out. It was the best place to break the news. Plenty of things for Steve to hit and or wear his anger out on that were actually built to handle such abuse. The trade-off being there were also a lot of things he could hurt himself on. Even better, when Phil got down there, Thor and Sam Wilson were there, 
and Barnes was nowhere in sight, either still sleeping or, well, wait, there he was, in the rafters that served as both support for some of the equipment and aerial platforms for the more acrobatic of the Avengers. Thor was one of the few people in the tower who could weather a physical assault by Steve without getting seriously injured in the process. He'd also already proven willing to serve as a target for Steve's anger over Barnes' situation. Phil actually suspected that was why Thor was present this morning. Certainly, he'd made a habit of joining Steve for workouts and sparring, but it hadn't been an everyday thing. Sam, of course, knew Steve would be getting filled in at some point, and had obviously decided to lurk as well, so as to be on hand when his services became necessary. Fortunately, he, like Thor, was a rather open and friendly person, so his hanging about wasn't noteworthy the way it would be if, say, Logan was lurking about. Winding Steve up, having a typical behavior going on, would be counterproductive. Phil had no idea if Barnes's presence would be a help or a hindrance. Oh, Captain, I hate to interrupt your morning workout, but there are some things I'd like to go over with you, Phil said. From the look Steve gave him, Steve suspected this was about Sergeant Barnes's captors. Sure thing, Agent Golson. Steve got off the treadmill he'd been running on. Behind Steve, Thor drifted closer under the not-all-that-subtle guise of poking at the butterfly machine. Sam, wisely, was still hanging back. He was in very good condition and fully capable of defending himself under normal circumstances, but these were anything but normal circumstances. If Steve reacted to the news physically, he was not going to be holding back. Phil dearly wished there was an easier, less traumatic way of breaking this news. Steve had been under enough pressure as it was. He wasn't a god. Sooner or later, he was going to break under the strain. And this news might just do it. While you were gone, we were with Jarvis's assistants. More like Jarvis figured most of it out before they'd got back, but that was a discussion for another time. Able to ascertain who Sergeant Barnes's captors were, Phil said. And, oh, that look on Steve's face did not bode well for Hydra. Not that they were ever going to have an easy time of it, but Barnes had always been Steve's soft spot. Steve would always have tried to wipe them out after discovering they were still around. That they were responsible for Barnes's condition was just fuel on the fire. Jet fuel! With a napalm chaser! Speaking of Barnes, he abruptly dropped down out of the rafters, but did so so quietly, Phil wasn't sure Steve knew he moved. He didn't come closer to the group, however. As there was simply no easy way to break the news, Phil for once just blurted it out, not making Steve ask before he got his answer. It was Hydra, Phil said. For one long moment, there was complete silence. If Phil didn't know better, he would have been tempted to think that Steve either had not heard him or had not understood what had been said. But that's not this was. This was... Well, rather like the initial second or so of Steve's reaction to the discovery that Soldier was Barnes. That split second of blank shock as Steve had processed what he was seeing, or in this case, what he'd just heard. Then Steve's expression shifted. A tide of red flushed his face and neck, and though presumed further down below the collar of the shirt he was wearing, his fists clenched and his eyes went flinty and murderous for a second before they closed, and Steve started to shake. And this was not the shaking of someone scared out of their mind. This was the shaking of someone right on the edge of losing control and fighting with everything they had to stay in control. Steve's jaw was clenched so tight, Phil was pretty sure he could hear his teeth grinding. Phil had no idea how long things might have stalled like that, Steve fighting for control and everyone waiting for the hammer to drop. He never got a chance to find out because between one breath and the next, Barnes was there, giving Phil a look that was somewhere between outrage, defiance, and fear, and putting himself between Phil and Steve like he thought Phil was going to physically attack Steve. Given what Barnes had likely been through, well... It was extremely probable that any emotional outbursts on his behalf had resulted in severe punishment. Phil was quite sure that Barnes wasn't to the point where he didn't automatically assume the worst of everyone around him. Whether it was suddenly having Barnes that close, even though with his eyes closed, Steve couldn't see him, or Steve merely reaching the end of his endurance. Well, Steve exploded, verbally and physically. The verbal 
Well, Steve descended into Gaelic. Given that while it was well known Steve was the son of Irish immigrants, he'd never been known to speak the language, at least not in public, not a good sign. As for the physical, well, Steve gave him credit where it was due. He got away from people, or tried to. Unfortunately, his first choice of target was one of the weight machines calibrated for super strength, something Steve could do a lot of damage to himself by attacking. So, of course, Thor intervened, moving fast enough, it was pretty much literally blink and miss it territory. The first time the two of them had done this, Steve hadn't exactly been truly fighting, mostly just flailing around as he gave vent to his rage. This time started the same way. Unfortunately, Soldier didn't seem to get that this wasn't the two men attacking each other in earnest, and he went to Steve's defense. On the one hand, good to see. On the other, well, it took all of about 10 seconds for things to get way out of hand and very confusing. Soldier was trying to defend Steve, which meant tangling with Thor. Steve, already on the warpath anyway, took exception to seeing Bucky trying to go toe-to-toe with Thor and tried to get between them, this time in earnest, at which point things became rather difficult to keep track of. Phil was just grateful Steve's shield and Thor's hammer weren't down here, or this could easily have gotten much, much, much worse. All Phil could do was ensure he and Sam got out of the range of any crossfire as the three men started wailing on each other in various degrees of earnest. Oh, and yell for Loki, who was the only one who had a way to separate them without hurting anyone in the process. Phil had little doubt that Thor could subdue both men, given the time to do so, but not without doing them damage first. For all his own skills, Phil knew better than to attempt to get control of that mess himself. Thor might respond to a barked order, but there was no guarantee that Steve or Soldier would. If he had been in his right mind, Steve definitely would have, but right this moment it was anyone's guess whether or not Steve would respond. And getting involved physically was the height of idiocy. Phil knew he was good, but he wasn't good enough to manage two super soldiers and an Asgardian. Jarvis, tell Loki what's happening and get him down here, Phil barked. Jarvis didn't bother responding audibly. His response came in the form of Loki teleporting into the room less than 10 seconds after the request was out of Phil's mouth. Well, I could see why you requested my assistance, Loki said in the sort of dry tone that indicated rather large amounts of sarcasm. Well, first things first, let's get the wild card out of the equation. Green gold tentacles sprang up from the floor near the brawling triad and snagged Barnes, pulling him away from the fight and restraining him from rejoining it. Once he was far enough away, Loki walked over. That, Loki said, pointing at the two still fighting it out, is not a legitimate attack. Steve was upset, so I did not wish him to hurt himself by punching. Loki waved a hand at all the hard metal items in the room. Most of that. So he presented himself as a target. Barnes didn't look like he was buying what Loki was selling, which was its own bizarre brand of encouraging that Barnes was willing to show that sort of expression. His memory wasn't back yet, as far as Phil knew, but his personality was recovering by leaps and bounds, comparatively speaking. Meanwhile, with Soldier out of the equation, Thor finally managed to pin Steve to the floor, who was still writing in Gaelic. Phil was actually kind of glad he didn't know that language because he had a feeling that Steve was cussing a blue streak and then some along with whatever else he was saying. And despite being rather thoroughly pinned, Steve was still trying to get out of Thor's grasp. He wasn't getting much of anywhere, thank goodness for Asgardian strength, but he was trying his hardest. And just like last time, in between one breath and the next, Steve's rage collapsed in on itself and gave way to something else. This time, though, there were no tears. Just a very worrying, hollow-eyed silence. Thor cautiously let Steve up, and after a moment, Steve wordlessly got to his feet and headed for the door to the stairwell, head bowed, shoulders slumped, and still silent. Do not let him out of the building without at least one of the team, Jarvis. Under any circumstances, Phil said. Steve hadn't looked like he wanted to go to war right the second, but that could change all too quickly. That, Sam said, speaking up for the first time and motioning toward the stairs where Steve had disappeared, is my cue. And he headed for the stairs as well. Phil eyed Thor and Loki. Thank you both for your assistance with this.